This is probably one of the more difficult uh, problem types to deal with um, in this chapter. Um, and it's the calculation or the relating of the density of material uh, to its crystal structure. So what I want to do is to show you that calculation in detail and save it as just a separate video. It's actually the four practice problem that's in your textbook 13.4. So it says chromium crystallizes with a bodied centered cubic unit cell. Again, information that's important is it's chromium, the element, it's bodied centered cubic unit cell. Uh, the radius, so that's an also important radius, is 1.125 picometers. Calculate the density of solid crystalline chromium in grams per centimeter cubed. So, how do we do this problem? It actually boils down to just looking at the units and then making careful calculations. So, first of all, uh, we need to go find some information about bodied centered cubic unit cells. And the, and the bits of information that we're going to need is we're going to need to know the number of atoms per unit cell. And we're also going to need to know um, the edge length of the unit cell. So we need to know L. And then a third thing that we'll need to use is we'll need to know what the molar mass of chromium is. So chromium has a molar mass of 51.9981. Uh, grams per mole. And the approach that we're going to take is this. We know that density is equal to mass over volume. And what we'll do first is we'll find the mass of a unit cell And the density is going to come out in grams, or we need to come out in grams per centimeter cube. So we're going to find that in grams. And then what we're going to do is very similar to the problem that we did at the end of the last section. We wanted to calculate the volume of a unit cell. In fact, this is the exact same procedure that you would follow. So to calculate the volume of a unit cell, right, we'll need to know the edge uh, length equation in relationship to radius. And we need to know it in centimeters so that we can cube it and get the volume of the unit cell. Again, this information is all located. We've all we've looked at it before and you could rederive it, but it's all located again in this table. So for a body centered cubic unit cell, um, there are two atoms per unit cell. So there's two chromium atoms in the unit cell. And the edge length is 4r over the square root of 3. OK, so two atoms per unit cell. And edge length is 4r r over the square root of 3. And so now we can start with the calculations for the problem. All right, so we have two atoms. So this is how this actually works. If you want to know the mass of the unit cell, you need to know the mass of two atoms in grams. Now you recognize that's going to be a tiny, tiny number, right? So we start with two atoms. And what we're going to do is convert that into moles. This is a normal process for finding mass from uh, atoms. Atoms, we're going to go like this. This is defined M. We're going to take atoms. We're going to get to moles. And we're going to get to grams. Okay. So I have two atoms of chromium in my unit cell. And then I know that there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole of chromium. And then I have the molar mass already. This will get me to my grams. But you notice all I'm doing is I'm just following these units. So I know it's 51.9981 grams for every one mole of 
chromium. If I do this calculation, and assuming I did it right, that comes out to um, 1.7269 uh, times 10 to the minus 22 grams. A really small number, but remember, we're dealing with just two atoms, right? We also know that we can calculate the edge length. So now we've already finished the top half of the calculation. We just need to finish calculating the volume of the unit cell. So I know that L is equal to 4 over the square root of 3 times R. Now, if you want to save yourself a little bit of time, you can simply do this, that the volume is equal to L cubed, and then you cube this result here. So now this can be calculated as uh, 4 over the square root of 3 times, and then uh, 125 uh, times 10 to the minus 12 meters, and then do the conversion all in the parentheses here. Just keep track of all of it. Um, and then 1 meter, or sorry, 10 to the minus 2 meters is 1 centimeter, like this. Or you could do it exactly like we did it here, where we calculate each bit out separately and then end up cubing the numerical result. Uh, either way would give you the same answer. just depends on up to, up to you on how comfortable you are with the calculation. So um, this part, just so you can keep track of it, is uh, 2.8868 times 10 to the minus 8. You can see the calculation on the screen there. So I just all I'm left with doing is cubing that number in order to get to the volume. So this would have been the same as the result that we did here for this particular calculation. So cubing that number, so I'll just raise it to the third power, comes out to 2.4056 times 10 to the minus 23rd. And so there's that result. Now, in order to... Um, calculate the density it's going to be the mass oh and this is centimeters cubed all right divide mass divided by volume so 1.7629 times 10 to the minus 22nd grams and then we have 2.4056 times 10 to the minus 23rd centimeters cubed that comes out to 7.328 times 10, oops, sorry, grams per centimeter cubed. And I just checked my math, and this actually is wrong, 7.178 times 10 to the 0, oh yeah, so just 7.178 grams per centimeter cubed. Now I have three significant figures in my picometers here, right? So I end up with 7.18 grams per centimeter cubed. So just sort of to summarize, when you're faced with this kind of problem, break it down into its simplest parts, right? We wanted to find the density. Now sometimes you're asked to calculate something else like unit cell length. But go ahead and think of it as, I'm trying to find the density. If I have density, that's my relationship I'm working with. It's mass divided by volume. And then I can calculate the mass of the unit cell based on my dimensional analysis, standard converting atoms to, to moles to grams. And then the volume gets calculated by knowing the unit cell length. And that comes from knowing that it's a body-centered cubic unit cell. 
And again, that inf this information that's up here, right, comes from that table that we looked at, and this is simply the molar mass of chromium.